We could say individually, uh, but this is time to pledge allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Carrie Dunn, could you call the roll, please? Yes. Um, Chairman Kurtz? Here. Dr. Dimmick? Present. Mr. Bezowski? Mr. McPhee? Here. And Mr. Norback? Present. And we have a quorum. The uh, item of business on the public hearing regards the permit application of Lamp Realty LLC. Um, Carrie, could you please read the call to the public hearing? Yes. Um, the permit application of Lamp Realty LLC, care of Joseph P. Williams Esquire, Shipman and Goodwin LLP, 265 Church Street, Suite 1207, New Haven, Connecticut, 06510, for a site plan, construction of two residential buildings, property located at 50 Hazel Drive, Cheshire, Connecticut, 06410, as generally shown on assessor's map number 15, lot number 52, in a SARD slash R-80 zone. Packet information is available for review on the town website homepage under, quote, documents distributed or displayed during virtual meetings, end of quote. Thank you. I'm not uh, entirely sure what the procedure is with the Zoom, but I would assume, and uh, Suzanne could correct me at any time, <clears throat> that the applicant will present what is going to happen relative to the building and the wetlands. And after that presentation, the commissioners will have an opportunity to ask questions. And after that, the public will have an opportunity to ask questions and should they make comments at the same time or should they ask questions and then have a, a comment period? I'm not sure of that. Uh, they can do either and they can send it to the email that's provided on the agenda and we will be checking that comment uh, email during the public hearing. So they can send both and we will organize the, at the questions first and then comments last. Great, and I would uh, like to remind everybody, this is an Inland Wetlands hearing, and we're not concerned about how many cars are gonna be on the road. Uh, we might be concerned about uh, the safety of the pond or the wetland areas around that, but we're not here to do things that are, to discuss things that are better off as a uh, planning and zoning concern. So when you ask your questions and make your comments, uh, could you please make them appropriate to why we're here tonight? Thank you. With that, uh, can I can I just interrupt Earl and get a clarification sure. on something on the public hearing? Um, I would it be prudent to ask if this hearing should be kept open just to ensure that all questions and everything got in uh, due to a technical uh, glitch or anything like that? Um, I, I'm just I'm just talking out loud here, so I want to get the commission's feel on that before we get started. Well, the information of where to submit comments has been posted on the website uh, well in advance of tonight's meeting. So that so, information has been on there of how the public can provide comments and questions to the commission, as well as providing a voicemail uh, phone number to provide questions and comments. Okay. All right, as long as that's in accordance with the statutes and government and everything, I just thought that perhaps um, everybody should get their fair chair to get a question in, that's all. But, but I will defer to you, Suzanne. Well, it, it, that's a really a determination for the commission. I'm just uh, informing you that we did post that information in advance of the meeting. So we wanted to make sure that the public had access and a means to provide question and comment if they had it. Okay, I just would hate to be called on the carpet because somebody could not voice their opinion due to the, the current climate that we're in. That's all. Well, well if we have technical up. difficulties or something mm -hmm. arises, obviously we'll deal with it at the time. Mm -hmm. And we're not trying to conduct the hearing to uh, not have people mm -hmm. have their say. So let's assume everything's going to be fine. And if it 
doesn't work out, we'll have to uh, make adjustments. Okay, fair enough. Um, Ted Hart is here representing the applicant. Are you going to speak first, Ted, or is Attorney Williams? Uh, Joe Williams, I think, will start us off. Yes, I will. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Is the sound okay? Yes. Good. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, and I, I just want to note, um, Mr. Chairman, well, first for the record, Joe Williams, I'm a partner at Shipman and Goodwin uh, in our New Haven office, 265 Church Street, and I've been practicing land use and environmental law in the state of Connecticut for a little over 25 years. Um, I agree with what Suzanne said, and um, because of the interesting time that we're in, we've been watching very carefully what's happening on every application, and I, I would confirm that it, it appears to me that the town has closely followed and adhered to the governor's executive order on how to conduct a hearing like this. Um, plus, I would add that this application was before the commission two weeks ago and was on the agenda then as well, and the, the opportunity has been available for folks to send in emails um, all of that time as well. Um, I will just, uh, like we did last time, um, but we'll start it over again, I, I will just give you a brief overview with some highlights, <laughs> and uh, I am glad to be here with you this evening with one of the best in the business, Ted Hart, uh, senior civil engineer with Milona McBroom in Cheshire, who I believe has been before this commission more than a couple times over the years. Uh, and we are seeking on behalf of Lamp Realty LLC, a permit to conduct regulated activities at 50 Hazel Drive. The uh, project in a nutshell consists of raising and removing two uh, con uh, convalescent home buildings, uh, which formerly housed up to 210 patients and staff along with an overgrown parking area and building in the same general area, two new residential apartment buildings, each of 57 units with a surface parking area, underground parking, an entirely new landscaping package and a brand new um, stormwater management system, which you will hear more about tonight. Uh, in, uh, in summary, the application proposes no direct wetland impacts it avoids any adverse indirect impacts to wetlands or water courses, and we believe, in fact, will represent a substantial improvement in the quality of the stormwater being discharged from the site into Larson's Pond that's on the property. The uh, site itself, and I know the commission has some uh, display boards from Milona McBroom, which um, either I'm happy to share or Suzanne, if you would like to share, it's not essential, but I just mentioned that to make sure everybody knew that. Yes, if you could identify which plans you'd like to see, then I can share them. Why don't we start with the existing conditions rendered plan that you received from Milona McBroom. It has a photo of the site with a little yellow border highlighting it. Okay. Called the existing condition map. Thank you, yes. EX2 at the bottom corner. <clears throat> Great, thank you. There we go. The property is 22 acres. It's mostly wooded. Um, the area you can see on this plan is only um, a portion of the site, uh, really probably less than half of the site. Uh, but to the left side is where the two existing convalescent home buildings are. They used to have a sort of X-shaped building in the middle of them. That's been demolished and Virtually the entire interior of the buildings um, have been demolished. Uh, the site is uh, for fortunate to have a pond that you can see a portion of in the bottom of the screen there, Larson's Pond. Uh, the pond and the wetlands on the site together make up about eight acres of the 22. Um, I would note those two buildings that you see there actually have a larger footprint and are closer to the, to the pond than buildings that we are proposing to build, which you'll see in a minute. Um, but the site's been abandoned as a, con as a convalescent home for more than 15 years, and it's very overgrown and has no stormwater treatment system. I would also note that um, some prior residential development proposals have been approved, both at wetlands and at zoning. Uh, and I submitted to the commission an approval that was referenced last time um, in 2005, a proposal came in to convert the two existing buildings and to build a new intervening building between them and to, um, 
to use the property for condominium residential use. And that um, proposal had a small direct wetland impact of about 700 square feet. It also had um, a sort of patio or deck down below the buildings near the pond and a dock going out to the pond. So sort of a direct access was proposed to the pond. Um, and that, uh, and that in intervening building, and you have that plan I submitted it, so you have it for the record of this hearing. The intervening building was actually had a portion that was a little bit closer to the wetlands still than the existing buildings. And Ted, Ted Hart is gonna go over in a minute, the distance between those buildings in the pond versus the, the uh, greater distance between the proposed buildings in the pond. But that proposal was approved by this commission. Uh, it did not go forward because of the downturn in the condominium market and the broader real estate market after the approvals were given. Now, if we can go to the um, proposed plan, and that would be, Suzanne, probably best would be the landscaping rendering, it says LS. Okay. And Ted will walk you through it in detail. I just wanted to, to note a couple of highlights, if you will. Um, our, our goal, my client's goal and the design team's goal was to actually remove some of the existing impervious surface from the upland review area to the pond and the associated wetlands, um, such as portions of the buildings and the asphalt driveway and parking lot that are currently located within the upland review area. We have pulled uh, that activity almost, almost entirely out of the upland review area. There are no direct wetlands impacts proposed in this plan, um, and there is no direct pond access proposed. You can see we just have along the sort of the bottom or the eastern edge of the site a, a stone dust path that people can walk on, but not anything built into the pond like under the last approval. Uh, there are some regulated activities in the upland review area, but I would note those consist largely of removing building and pavement from that area and then installing stormwater detention basins as part of a stormwater management plan, um, all of which we believe will be protective and beneficial to the wetlands long term. Uh, so in sum, we're proposing to create no adverse impacts to wetlands or water courses on the property. In fact, we think long term there will be a benefit to them. And after Ted gives you more detail, we will respectfully request your approval. If no questions for me, Mr. Chairman, that's my summary. I appreciate it. And I'll turn it over to Ted Hart. Thank you, Joe. Questions? Okay. Uh, Suzanne, can you go to our, our design plans? I think I'll start with that. Okay. It's taking a while to open that file. Uh, I can just put this up while I work on this. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess that that'll uh, that'll be okay for the moment. Um, Again, my name is Ted Hart, professional engineer with the firm of Milona McBroom. I'm here on behalf of Lamp Realty, uh, the owner applicant uh, project. Uh, 50 Hazel Drive is the address. And the site is basically located uh, west or east of Hazel Drive and west of Clarsons Pond. Um, the parcel is L-shaped and what we're seeing is just one leg of it here on this, this uh, map. Uh, on the screen. Um, the rest of it goes uh, to the north and then around to the east over to Lakeview uh, Avenue. Um, I just wanted to point out something that um, uh, Joe was talking about. Uh, our plan here just touches the Upland Review area, basically. Uh, the, 
the uh, pavement. So the, the pavement behind the southerly building or the building on the left, um, the rear of the parking is right basically at the Upland Review line. And then over behind the, um, the northerly building, the building on the right, uh, the Upland Review area comes in just a little bit onto the pavement because the, the wetland kind of pose out there. Um, Suzanne, you've been able to open the overall plan or not? Uh, not yet. Um, what I was going to point out is, is that this L parcel is uh, bisected by a, a wetland corridor um, with a small water course that comes from the north and, and drains down into uh, Larson's Um and As Joe pointed out, that right now, site has a remains of a convalescent home on it. Um, there's also an existing storm drainage uh, pipe located on the property that uh, drains Hazel, uh, or, yeah, Hazel Drive, uh, the intersection of Hazel Drive and Mayview Avenue, uh, basically, just to the right of the upper um, access drive that we're showing. There's a drainage system that comes across the property and we're gonna be picking that up, putting it into a sediment trap and then discharging it uh, next to the, the pond in a, with a uh, level spreader. Um, and as Joe pointed out, there's no stormwater quality uh, management on the site now. Uh, it's just uh, sheet flow off of the, the pavement uh, down to the pond and the wetlands. Excuse me, can I ask questions during the presentation? Sure. All right, if I may, this is Tom Norbeck. Um, you, uh, you were talking about the, the drainage from Hazel Drive. Is yeah. that surface or subsurface drainage that we're talking about there? So is it piped? It's piped. Right. Um, if you look at the, the uh, map, I don't know where it went, but um, the colored map that was uh, on the screen just a minute ago, there's several catch bases in Hazel Drive uh, that are collected storm drain and pipe okay. and properties. All right, that, that covers, I can look further. I just wanted to make sure I, I was envisioning it correctly. Thank you. Right, okay. So the plan is to remove the old buildings, uh, build two new apartment buildings uh, with 57 apartments in each building. Uh, for a total of 114 apartments. The buildings will be three stories uh, with parking underneath. Uh, cars can drive around um, the, to the back side of the building and enter uh, underneath the, the building. There's two um, driveways that go in underneath the building, as you can see in the plan. Uh, Suzanne, can you go to the next uh, sheet? I think it's the existing conditions. Okay, this shows the overall uh, parcel. As you can see, we're, we're looking at the piece up near Hazel Drive, the upper left-hand corner where the two uh, buildings are that remain from the uh, convalescent home. Uh, that is the area that we're going to be uh, developing. Just to the north, uh, there's a uh, dashed rectangle. That's a large, um, the remains of a large uh, underground uh, sewage disposal system. This had on-site septic uh, at, at once upon a time, and so that's where, where that was. And then just to the north of the, uh, the northerly building, there's a large parking lot that still remains also. Um, what this shows is kind of the wetland system that goes to the north. Uh, there's, a, there's a brook that comes down from the northerly property line and comes into uh, Larson's Pond. And then there's several other uh, wetland fingers up through that area. Uh, just out of curiosity, is your property line run all the way to the opposite shoreline? I believe it does, yes. Ah. That's the way it's drawn, yes. So it, there is a dam on the other side of Larson's Pond, and it looks like your property line includes portions of the dam. 
it may very well. Um, there's a piece on the southerly um, side of the pond that is not owned by or not part of this parcel. Uh -huh. <clears throat> you see that little triangular wedge yeah, shape? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we, we had the problem when Larson's Pond had the gigantic flood at one point, the water was three feet over the top of the dam. Wow. Uh, and, and, and the uh, water was well beyond the wetland boundary at that time. But I, I'm looking at your, con was looking at your contours and you're not gonna have anything developed within that 100 year flood line. So I think you're all right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's, can we go to the next sheet? Let's move. Let's let's go to the uh, LS sheet or LA sheet, sheet four. Okay. Um, this is showing the overall layout. Um, well, let's let's go to uh, great, the GU sheet. Uh, I wanted to show you uh, the deferred parking area. So we we reduce the parking. Um, as you can see in the upper right hand corner, uh, we have a, another plan that shows uh, the total amount of parking. We are proposing not to build all the parking. Uh, we don't believe we need it. And um, we're hoping to uh, convince the Planning and Zoning Commission of that also. But in preparing our um, impact statements and our calculations for stormwater runoff, we did it based on the total, you know, if, as if all the deferred parking was built, uh, kind of a worst case scenario. But but we're not we're hoping not to build 43 parking spaces because we don't feel we need them. Um, so these buildings will be connected to public water and public sewer. Mm -hmm. uh, the proposed stormwater management plan will pick up the drainage from Hazel Drive, as I said before. Um, we will also be collecting all of the on-site uh, stormwater. We'll be passing it through a hydrodynamic separator uh, and then into the sediment forebay of the stormwater basins. Um, the stormwater basins are designed to not only provide um, re reductions in the quantity of runoff, but also water quality. They, re they retain the water quality volume uh, in the bottom of the basin. Uh, we, we provided the storage volume for that in the basins. Um, but, but there will be no standing water in the bottom of the basins. We've got a, uh, an underdrain uh, design to uh, remove standing water. Uh, it will drain out through the underdrain very slowly. Um, and, and so we'll get that settling action of the, uh, in the stormwater to reduce the uh, sediment loads. The bottom of the basins will be, uh, we expect will be, uh, not not standing water, but the soils will be moist because they're it's fairly close to the groundwater table. And so we're uh, planting it with New England wet mix. Mm -hmm. um, we've also provided a, a soil erosion control plan. Um, we've got three sediment traps with diversion berms. Uh, you can go to the um, uh, the next sheet, SC, uh, Suzanne, there we go. So we have three sediment traps um, located on the um, easterly side of the, the property. And we've got uh, diversion berms and swales directing water to them. Uh, we, we're going to be collecting any off and, and putting it through these uh, sediment traps. We've also got hay bales and, and um, silt fence. And the town engineer also asked us to put up orange safety fence uh, to protect all that. So <coughs> that. Um, the steep slopes will be uh, protected with erosion control blankets. Um, we've got two stockpile areas ringed with um, uh, silt fence. Um, and also we've got two construction entrances. Um, what else? Um, so we've prepared a detailed landscape plan. We just had that up. Um, we're going to be 
you know, be planting shade trees, some ornamental trees, pine trees, shrubs, and ornamental grasses. Uh, we've also, um, doesn't show up here very well, but we also have a walking path along the backside uh, down near the, near the pond. It's gonna go over the top <clears throat> of uh, stormwater uh, basin berms and it'll be one kind of loop from northerly north to south, basically. Um, as Joe said, there's no direct wetland impacts. The upland review area disturbance is 44,320 square feet. Um, but as I, as I was pointing out when I started, the upland review area is right along the edge of the pavement. We don't have uh, very much pavement in the upland review area. It's mostly uh, our stormwater basin uh, and the uh, stone dust walking trail. Um, so I think that it's an improvement over what was there. The existing building um, right now is, um, hold on a second, it's uh, 34 feet from the edge of the water. Um, on the northerly building and 39 feet to the edge of water um, on the southern building. So those two buildings are right on the water. They're very close. Um, and so our buildings are gonna be over a hundred feet away from the, uh, the edge of the, uh, the pond. Um, but I think that that's gonna be a, a, a big improvement to move everything a little bit further away from the pond. So the engineering uh, department has reviewed the plans. They reviewed our stormwater, especially the stormwater for Hazel Drive. Um, we've made some comments on that. We've addressed those comments, and they are are satisfied with our our um, our plan. Ted, can um, I ask you one more quick one? Sure. The, how much of the existing conditions there are within the upland review area, either impervious or buildings, square footage wise? Um, I don't. I think I don't have that. I didn't go back and check that, but there is, uh, I mean, if you, if you look at the, let's go back to that aerial if we could, Suzanne. Yeah. It's called existing condition map, I think. Nope, that's not it. It's a separate, separate map. So you're not apt to have an overlay, but we should be able to get some sense of yeah. how many square be our yeah so there it is so the um the northern the, the northerly building in the middle of the the site that co the corner is 34 feet to the the edge of the wetlands the right. edge of the, um and then there's also the uh the paved parking a lot of that is also probably right along the uh in in the uh, upland review area as well so, Ted and Suzanne, excuse me. You you can see this maybe even somewhat more clearly on the in the plan set sheet EX two the survey because it, it calls out the uh, upland review area and you can see the portions of the buildings and paved area that's that's in there. Oh, okay. I, I can look at that on my own, I guess. But I I was just trying to relate it to how much I think you said forty four thousand square feet in the upland mm -hmm. review area. Right. In the proposed, and I'm just wondering how much even is it approaching 44,000 square feet that are inside of that area now existing? Um, I haven't done the calculation, but it's probably, it's probably at least half or more, probably more than half of that. See, the, uh, the, old, the old plan did have some uh, disturbance um, for the, uh, 
the old septic system, but that's a little bit outside. Um, but there's the large parking lot also that, that uh, right. and there's, there's pavement coming around um, between the, the building and the uh, wetland, the northerly building and the uh, wetlands. There's, there's pavement that came around mm -hmm. that building. Uh, I was just looking for, for like a point of reference. Obviously, it's a disaster as it sits, but I was just mm -hmm. wondering how that relates. But thank you. Okay. <laughs> Um, there was also a, a prior approval in, in 2005. Um, could you go to that uh, plan, Suzanne? I apologize for getting you off track here. No, no, this is, this is uh, I'm getting near the end here. You can just uh, talk amongst yourselves while I get this. <laughs> okay. Well, the 2005 plan called for maintaining those two uh, buildings that are on site now and building a new building in between. Um, I don't have all the, I just wanted to show you visually you know, what that looked like um, so you could see what kind of impacts were um, uh, approved previously. And the other that plan was they, they had uh, patios or decks uh, right down to the water and a, and a dock out on the water. We're not planning on doing anything like that with this plan. Okay. Um, just a couple other things. Uh, the diversity database was was checked, and there's no no species uh, of, of special concern here. Um, and is there a construction sequence as part of the plans? What's that? Is there a construction sequence as part of the plans? I believe, yes, there is. Yeah, it's on the, on the cover sheet. Okay. We have a construction sequence, uh, an operation and maintenance plan post-construction uh, all on the, the title sheet. Everybody will see it. So this was the plan that was approved previously. You can see the two uh, uh, end buildings, we'll call them, uh, were gonna be maintained and then that X that's shown here, that, that is no longer, that was torn down and it was supposed to be a, a building uh, connecting you know, straight through from side to side. And then there was also a, a piece in the middle that extended down towards the, uh, the pond. Uh, and then you can kind of see in kind of a light yellow or brown mustard color, uh, there was some uh, patios, decks, and also a... Uh, a dock that went out onto the, the pond. Um, and as you can see here, this, you know, they, they had quite a bit of activity, um, you know, throughout this, uh, and all along this, this uh, well, well, they have uh, driveways, uh, the buildings, the parking lot just to the north of the building, and then the long access road also, uh, the circles around to the north is also in the area. So there's significant impact uh, for this plan that was approved previously uh, back in 2005. Um, so with that, I would just like to summarize that the, the stormwater uh, 
plan will be uh, a big improvement over what's out there now and what's uh, you know what's draining into uh, the wetlands. Um, there's going to be no adverse impacts to the um, based on our our designs. Um, so that that wraps it up. Joe, do you have anything more? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, no, that's our presentation, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would just note that although, um, you know, we, as we noted, we do have activities in the Upland Review area, but most of them are removing the stuff that we don't want to keep there and adding in things that will benefit the wetlands long term um, by way of plantings in basins, et cetera. And with the ultimate uh, question before the commission being, is there harm to wetlands or water courses, water courses by virtue of those activities in the Upland Review area, the answer is clearly no. So we uh, would be happy to answer anything else and we respectfully request your approval. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from commission members? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I did find uh, that construction sequence. Of course, what was sent to us is half size. So it's in four point type and I can barely read it. But it does look as though they're doing regrading before they're putting the erosion controls in in that construction sequence. Maybe I'm, as I say, I have trouble reading it. And it seems to me some erosion control should be in before they start the regrading, at least at the base. Oh. Um, now that the um, the basically, let, let me just go through it quickly. You know, first, uh, number one is to have a pre-construction meeting. Number two, the contractors to stake out the limit of disturbance. Uh, number three, contractors to install erosion controls along the perimeter and stabilize the construction entrances. Uh, number four is clearing and grubbing. So they're going to first. Okay. Does that answer your question, Charles? Before, yeah, well, I'm saying at the very bottom, nine and 10 there, nine has got the grading and 10 is something about the erosion controls. But I say by my copy, that whole construction sequence is only an inch and a quarter wide, so. <laughs> yeah, no, number 10 says the central control plan shall be modified by the contractor at the direction of the engineer. Uh, okay. and Town representative as necessitated by changing site conditions. All right, I, I, I had trouble reading with a very tiny print in my copy. That I, don't know if, I don't know if Suzanne is able to zoom in on that sheet on the screen if it, oh, it's not asking for too much. I, which screen was that? I don't which, the, the, cover uh, sheet screen, the, the construction sequence. Wait, I got a magnifying glass here and it's not even helping. <laughs> Could be more me than the print size. Oh. I think right. it's right, Charles. I think number. Yeah, I got it now. Now that okay. you got that, I can see that I couldn't read number. Uh, for on my copy, but that's much better. I yeah, just, I think it's, yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay, that was just, uh, that's fine now. Okay, yeah. that, that looks good. No further questions. <laughs> This is, Mr. Uh, Chairman, we do not have any comments or questions from the public. This is Will, Will McPhee. I do have one question. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you. Okay. Um, part of the public hearing is look at alternative plans. And in my opinion, reviewing plans that were already previously approved, which don't have any bearing, in my opinion, on, on this presentation. Um, what alternative plans were looked at to eliminate any impact to the upland review? Because looking at the maps, it looks like this whole thing could be moved west to get to get outside of the upland review area. 
Well, we did we did take out 43 parking spaces um, to reduce the impacts. So that that was our our plan to uh, reduce any uh, impacts to the Upland View area. And we don't have Why? any okay. impact to the uh, on the wetlands. I, I understood. I'm just looking at the shape of your water retention basins and how close they are to being outside of the upland review area in I, I you know not knowing the, the ground and everything uh, the top topography of it all why it's not closer to the parking lot in order to simply get out of those areas um, they, they follow the shape of the wet uh, the upland review area and I just didn't know if the southern building could be moved west in order to allow more room and, and have no upland in, uh, impact But I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Northern building. My apologies, Northern building would be farther away. If I could, I just wanted to follow on to what Ted, I mean, it's a, it's a fair question, Mr. Chairman, but um, just to clarify this, the statutory and regulatory standard is, are there adverse ad impacts to the wetlands? If so, what are the feasible and prudent alternatives that would have less adverse impact on the wetlands or water course? And our courts have said where there is no evidence of likely adverse impact to the wetlands or water courses, then you don't have to do a feasible prudent alternative analysis. So it, it's not it's not required any way that you, you, know, you propose alternatives to stay out of the upland review area. That's a, a regulatory area to look at the activity to see if they harm the wetlands. And so the ultimate question for the commission is, are you harming the wetlands? And I think we've gone in the other direction toward improving the situation. And, and just follow up on that. The grades on this site are not, not particularly easy. Um, there is quite a slope coming from you know, high on the, the west side, uh, coming down to uh, Larson's Pond. If you, can, if you look at uh, Hazel Drive as it goes around the corner and up to Mayview Avenue, <clears throat> it's very steep there. Um, so you know, that's indicative of the, the, the site topography. <clears throat> One so could say that by, by uh, simply eliminating the impact you are uh, in, in increasing the buffer from the wetlands uh, to any um, uh, disturbance uh, would definitely protect the wetlands better. So I, I, it all depends how you look at it, but that's all I have. Well, my feeling of it is, is that since they are moving removing existing buildings, the actual uh, area close to the wetlands will be less after they finish than it is at the present time. So that's an improvement in my mind. Anything else? I agree with Charles. I think it's a fast improvement. I know that area well, having visited off and on since about 1973. <laughs> Were there any uh, requests for the public to speak, Suzanne, since last time? No, no comments. And I will just double check it again. No comments. So you should probably record that as of 819, there was no, seen as we are in this uh, virtual environment, yeah. probably you know, demonstrate when when the last opportunity for them to speak was. Well, I seem uh, to feel like we could close the hearing, but I uh, would like to do something that's probably not uh, according to Hoyle. If a comment should come in tonight or tomorrow morning or at some point, perhaps um, it can be sent to the applicant for a uh, for a comment or at least an answer to the person who's so concerned with it would that be proper or could that be done and i'm thinking just the practical part of it i'm not thinking uh, of Earl, uh, I'd have really no, once the public hearing is closed we wouldn't be able to receive. receive any more comment except from okay. public agencies right yeah. okay in that case we can declare the hearing closed thank, thank you. you everyone Thank you.
Do we proceed to our regular meeting or do you want to take a break or what is your pleasure? Let's hit it. Let's go. Go for it? Yeah. Okay, I call the meeting to order at what are we now? 825? 820. 820, yes. 820. We've already pledged our allegiance to the flag. I didn't see anybody leaving. So I assume we have a uh, a quorum. Correct. And is there a motion to approve the meetings from the June the uh, minutes from the meeting of June second? With the corrections that I had uh, made, one of them had my uh, in the original draft had my vote the wrong way. <laughs> is there a second? Second. I move and second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Carried by those commission members present. Aye. What? Communications. Uh, Suzanne, do you want to uh, take over? Sure. First communication is the staff communication regarding the application that was the subject of a public hearing tonight for 50 Hazel Drive. Second is a request for determination for 85 Fieldstone Court for new business tonight. Third is a staff communication for the same. Number four is a request for determination for an above ground pool in an upland review area at 242 Patton Drive. That's on the agenda under new business. Number five is a staff communication for the same. Communication number six is an application for Highland Avenue site plan. Uh, number seven is a staff communication for the same. Communication number eight is a request for determination, Ed Barnett for 569 Cornwall Avenue. Communication number nine is an application for Ed Barnett, 569 Cornwall Avenue. Communication number 10 is a staff communication for the same. Communication 11 is a request for release of cease and desist order for Ed Barnett, 569 Cornwall Avenue. And 12 is a request for determination for 540 Peck Lane above ground pool. That's on the agenda under new business tonight. Okay, and that no is inspections. Okay, and no inspections. We'll go to uh, unfinished business. Permit application of Tim Timothy McMurray on Jarvis Street. Yes. Do we have any. Uh, We've had some communication, but nothing was said. Uh, Mr. McMurray is here okay. in the meeting tonight. Yeah, hi. I'm. I'm. I took the recommendations from the previous meeting. I have Cole Engineering is revising the the layout to include the gabion barriers, the details to correct that uh, the the 140 uh, the two errors on the 140, and I'm working with uh, Eric Davison at Davison Environmental to get the environmental impact study done before the July 7th deadline. Okay, I guess we have nothing we can look at. Well, the applicant is here. Do you have any questions? Do you have enough um, information, Suzanne, to uh, prepare a uh, a draft motion by the next? Well, meeting? we we will wait on getting the revised plan that make the um, changes that the commission suggested the last time. The absolute mandatory action date is July seventh, so I will work with their engineer to try to get the plans well in advance so I can review them and distribute them to commission members and I will have a draft motion that night. Okay, I guess we can leave it at that. Yes, Next, the permit application of Bartos and Catherine Gralla. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Yes, so there is a draft motion for approval. The commission did not have any further questions based on the presentation at the last meeting. Um, I did put together the standard language for stipulations. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could read through the stipulations so they can Please. be on the record. 
okay? So starting with the stipulations, number one, any lack of compliance with any condition or stipulation of this permit shall constitute a violation of the Cheshire Inland Wetlands and Watercourses regulations, and an enforcement order shall be both issued and recorded on the Town of Cheshire land records. Number two, no, ch no changes or modifications may be made to the plans as presented without subsequent review and approval to the Cheshire Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission. Number three, prior to the commencement of clearing, grading, or any construction activities covered under this permit, the applicant shall provide adequate 48-hour notification to staff so that staff may verify the following items have been completed by a qualified party. A, the accurate staking and flagging of all clearing limits conducted by a qualified individual. Staff may insist on additional staking or flagging if warranted by field conditions. B, the proper installation of all sediment and erosion controls indicated on the above reference plan. Staff may insist on additional controls if warranted by field conditions. C, the contact information with a 24-hour number for the individual with the responsibility and authority to receive notices of any breaches or deficiencies of the sediment and erosion controls on site and to effectuate repair of any such breaches or deficiencies within six hours of such notice from the sediment and erosion control inspector or other appropriate staff of the town of Cheshire. D, the proper installation of non-encroachment markers along the wetland boundary as shown on the above reference plan. Staff may insist on additional or relocation of markers if warranted by field conditions. E, the professional engineer certification in writing to the commission that all required erosion and sedimentation controls are in place and functioning as represented by the applicant to ensure prevention of erosion and sedimentation into adjacent wetlands and watercourses. The cost of the professional engineer shall be borne by the applicant. The applicant shall also notify commission staff so that staff may inspect the site to verify that all the required controls are in place. Staff may insist on additional controls if field conditions warrant them. Number four, all disturbed areas on the site not directly required for construction activities shall be temporarily seeded and hayed until the site is permanently stabilized. Number five, Inspection of the condition, integrity, and adequacy of the sedimentation and erosion controls shall be made by a qualified party on a regular basis, either weekly or after every significant rainfall of a half inch or greater, whichever is sooner, until all disturbed areas are stabilized. Said party shall be independent of the contractor. All reports shall be submitted to the contractor and commission staff within three days of inspection or prior to the next storm event, whichever is sooner. All breaches or deficiencies shall be forwarded to a contact individual, that should say as defined above, immediately after inspection. The cost of said inspections shall be borne by the applicant. Six, per section 12 of the Cheshire Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Regulation, a bond covering the cost of a sediment and erosion control bonds uh, controls on lot 1B as shown on the above reference plan, shall be filed with the town planner's office prior to the commencement of construction or site activities and prior to the request for a building permit. The amount of the bond shall be determined by the Cheshire planning office. Number seven, throughout the course of conducting construction activities covered by this permit grant, and per section 11.2K of the Cheshire Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Regulation, the applicant shall be responsible Can you hear me? All of a sudden you went silent. Uh -huh. uh, we just lost power here at Town Hall, and now we are on yeah. the generator. Oh, you're kidding. Oh. No, so the computer just went. Um, I'll continue to read this, and then I'll figure this out. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Um, the applicant for ensuring that all maintenance equipment and vehicles is performed as far as practical from all wetlands and watercourses at least 100 feet if possible. All oil, gasoline, and chemicals needed at the site shall be stored in secondary containment to prevent contamination of any wetlands and watercourses from possible leaks. And number eight, this permit grant shall expire 16th, 2025. I move staff wording. That is it for the stipulation. Moved by Charles Dennett, is there a second? I second it, Carrie. Looks like I have done. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Thank you. 
Motion carried unanimously by those commission members present. The next is the yes, permit application. You're supposed Pardon to ask me? days even when you don't expect them. <laughs> Amazing. Um, Thank you. Next, the permit application of Lamp Realty. Do we have something to discuss? Are we ready to uh, ask Suzanne to draft a motion or what's your pleasure? Let's ask Suzanne first if she thinks she has enough information if we ask her to draft a motion to go ahead. Yes, I believe that we do have enough information on the record that I could draft a, uh, a motion for the next meeting. Okay, Will, you had uh, a few questions. Do you have some input on that? Would you like to uh, mention? I'm, I'm just not completely satisfied that they met the constraints of uh, providing other alternative opportunities. I don't, I'm not really concerned about previous approvals and or the existing conditions. I'm more worried about the property as if it was a, a new piece of property. So I'm just, um, I, I thought some improvements could have been made to that plan pretty simply, um, but I, they are obviously didn't want to uh, uh, partake in, in listening to my questions or opinions. So that's my opinion. Well, do you think we should ask her to come back with some uh, answers to your concerns? Their I thought that was what the... they're making things better. So yeah, I've been the upland review area, which you know, I don't know the legality of that, but uh, they did. That was their answer. It didn't uh, didn't say, well, we tried this and that and the other thing. And I, I know you're concerned about it. I agree with you that um, that that was their answer. I, I don't know the legality of it, Charles. I could you probably know more on that. Um, I but, think they are uh, the answer we got from their lawyer is pretty much what the courts ha have said that the uh, alternatives or alternatives that would could possibly reduce the impact to the wetlands, not necessarily those that would reduce impact to the upland review area unless the upland review area is, is critical to the survival of the wetlands, so. Yeah, the, up, the upland review area still falls within our purview though. And, and I regardless- In our purview, uh, that particular upland review area, I, I think case history is, not case history, but the history of the site is important in that their proposal is reducing uh, the, uh, burden on the upland review area compared to the present uh, uh, conditions. Yeah, I guess. I mean, the present conditions is so deteriorated that there's hardly any asphalt left. So um, I, I, and then nothing's going to be done with that property with, that could be salvaged the, the previous the, the existing conditions. So yeah. you're starting from scratch, in my opinion, but that's just my two cents. Yes, if this were an application that would be directly impacting the wetlands, like putting fill in it or anything, then you'll hear the other side of me where I try as much as possible to reduce the amount of direct wetland impact whenever uh, I see it. And their alternatives are, are especially important in my mind. This right. Is, see and that and this is also in our uh, regulations, it's 10.2 B. And it says um, with, uh, regarding alternatives would cause less or no environmental impact to wetlands or water courses. And it talks about feasibility. So it, I, I do think that attorney was correct, but I understand mm -hmm. what you're asking. It, it's a good question. No. Mm -hmm. Seems like a fair question to ask if they could have simply made an adjustment yes. to eliminate any impact to the upland review area to give just more of a buffer to an already existing issue. That's all. Uh, Earl, so I, I, I guess we have enough to move on. Um, I don't know where there's going to be any uh, resolve to this um, uh, based on the fact that we've closed up, you know, public hearing, um, but I, I'll lean on anybody else in their opinions. Okay, I think we all need to be satisfied, but uh, we may as well move on. So Suzanne, you know what we're saying, right? Uh, yes, I'm not I'll back in okay. the meeting yet. Oh, okay. In that case, can we go on a new business without you or? Uh... Uh, yes, you can carry on. I can right. hear you. 
but you are with us, no? Well, just by phone, I'm not able to get into the Zoom meeting to oh. put up any of the display information. Okay. Wow. Is that an issue for people, though? I think it will be uh, coming right up. So. Yes. Because they don't have the ability to put it up on the screen themselves. They have to allow, I, you know, have me do it, and I can't get back in. It's saying that it's waiting for the host to let me in, yet I'm the host. <laughs> I think William Volker is the one who has the authority to let you in at this point. Yes. No, I don't. No, I'm a guest at this meeting, and I don't have any ability to let anybody in. So. Well, actually, your, your name came up as the host. It just well, came up on the, on the screen. Said Mr. Yeah, well, I, that, that's news to me. Let me check. All right, hold on. That's funny. I mean, I'm not. Mine says the same thing as Suzanne says. Host will let you in soon. <laughs> so, and I didn't. I didn't schedule the meeting, so I. I don't know how I get to be the host. I don't know. It just came up and said no. that to us. But. That's what I saw. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, can you yeah, I continue to get the message saying, please wait, the host will let you in soon. Well, with, and I meanwhile, just, I'm the host. Um, I think we're at an impasse. Says, Anthony oh, is the now host. Anthony's no. the host. Who's Anthony? <laughs> okay, I Mr. am. Uh, let's see. There he is. I don't see anything on my screen that says I can let anybody in. No, I think it's the other Anthony, perhaps. Ah, you're the host now. <laughs> well, I spent time with him. He's a great host. Uh, who's <laughs> Anthony Zardo? Is that the? This is, I hate computers. Well, huh? Can we uh, go out of order? Okay, wait, wait, let's see. Let's see if this works. Yes. Now you're the host. host again. I'm here. All right. You still have not have power? Uh, we're on generator right now. That's weird. Okay, can you put up uh, maps and pictures and whatever? Yes, I can. Oh, so we're ready to go? Yeah, let's talk fast. <laughs> okay. I have to, uh, for the next thing, Darren Overton sent me something via email, so I have to log into my email to get it. But yes, I'm ready to move forward. Okay, we have a request for determination from Nozel Builders in Fieldstone Court. And Darren Overton is going to present for the applicant. Or for the requester. Hello, everybody. It's great to see all you guys. It's been a long time. <laughs> As you can tell from the length of my beard, it's been quite some time. I'm competing with Dr. Dimmick for the longest beard tonight, I think. <laughs> I clipped a half inch off mine yesterday. <laughs> oh, see, I'm getting closer. <laughs> um, so I'm here for the record on behalf of uh, Nozzle Builders. Um, I, I guess I'll start out while Suzanne is hopefully getting the graphic up on the screen. Um, this was part of a prior application. I think it goes back to 2016, where we had an application to put up the original building, which was a combination of warehouse and office building for a, uh, a couple of different uses out there. Um, the first use was for nozzle builders, and then they were leasing space to shred it in the other part of the building. So we had at that point permitted the development of the building, the circulation around it, the parking, um, and also a relatively large stormwater management basin on the west side um, to handle the stormwater runoff um, to meet not only peak flow attenuation standards, but also water quality standards. So thank you, Suzanne. Um, this is the portion of the property that is subject of the determination tonight. On the right hand side, you see the existing warehouse. Um, there's a loading dock area represented by those gray doors, which are part of the building. North is 
generally straight up on this plan. So what's highlighted in gray is the additional parking that they wanna to add to this application. Um, the nozzle builders, uh, well, owner and tenant of the building, their business has expanded and they have uh, workers that come in in the morning and drop off their cars, pick up the trucks for nozzle builders and go out to job sites. And they've, they've grown since 2016 so that they need some additional parking spaces. Um, the off the plan to the east is a relatively steep slope, which they had blasted to accommodate this project to begin with. Um, relatively expensive and difficult to try and add the parking over there. So they wanted, they asked us to look at the simplest place to add the parking that they need. So on this west side adjacent to the stormwater basin, we're proposing to add, I believe it's 18 spaces here, highlighted in the gray. And there'll be some filling down into the stormwater basin there. But the basin was originally oversized. And what we found is even with the loss of volume and with the increase um, runoff from the impervious, there's still enough volume in that basin to meet the peak flow standards. We're not changing any of the runoff conditions. That area on the west side of pavement was designed to sheet flow into the basin or the catch basin that uh, exists there. Um, as part of the engineering review for this, uh, they asked us to, in the stone filter trench at the edge of pavement, to install a, a collection drain that would anything getting through the stone trench layer into the drain would then drain to either of the sediment chambers at either end of this parking area and, and route through those um, into the basin. So higher flows will route through there, lower flows will probably infiltrate and bypass or overflow into the basin. Um, the relevant highlights on this plan to the Wetlands Commission, the green line here is the mapped wetlands the red dashed line that we show here is the prior limited disturbance um, relative to the development back in 2016. And then kind of faintly here, you can see there's a yellow outline around that gray parking area that represents the proposed disturbance relative to this parking expansion. So that, that kind of summarizes what we're trying to do here. Um, we're not changing the drainage patterns. Everything runs off into the stormwater basin from the pavement. We are not going beyond the prior limit of disturbance. Uh, we are not proposing any disturbance in wetlands here. And there is only a small area of upland review area disturbance that we will be adding pavement at the south end of this gray area. Is the area currently being, although it's not paved, is it, what is the condition? Is that a process stone or something? Currently there's a four foot stone strip for the sheet flow runoff from the paving. Right. Um, and there's a guardrail there, and then it slopes down into the basin, vegetated slope. All right. But you're not increasing the amount of disturbed area in the upland review area compared to present. No, we have no additional disturbance beyond the original development disturbance. I don't see a problem. Nor I. Any other comments? Is there a motion for a uh, no effect on the I, I, I move, area? The I minimum? move that the proposed activities uh, do not constitute uh, anything significant in terms of impact to the wetlands and therefore will not require a permit. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 None opposed. Passed unanimously by those commission members present. Thank you. I appreciate all your time tonight. Good to see you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you, Darren. Ladies and gentlemen, good to see you all. Have a good night. <laughs> hey, Darren. We have another request for determination. Michael Lezzi, 242 Patton Drive, an above ground pool. Yes, hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. You, uh, I uh -huh. can see, I can't see you, but I can hear you. Oh, there, there I am. There you are. All right. Do you have anything to say for yourself? 
Yeah, coronavirus has me uh, applying for a pool instead of going to Disney this year. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we're, uh, we're applying for a uh, above ground pool. Um, uh, and that's pretty much it. So I appreciate the uh, commission's uh, uh, consideration on this. Do we have any questions or do we have any concerns or drawings? Mr. Chairman, yes, I can pull up some information on this. So the backyard of this property is mostly comprised of the Upland Review area, which is shown in the blue lined area. The pool that's proposed is proposed behind the uh, garage. Correct. In an area that is currently lawn. And yep. as is indicated in the letter from uh, pretty, there's no need for tree removal or grading or anything like that in order to allow for an above ground pool to be in this existing lawn area. Are the usual safeguards for uh, when the pool is drained or clean so that uh, the water is not going to be running all over the place? I can provide that information to the homeowner of the recommendation that the state has of getting the water at a proper pH before discharging it overland so that it doesn't create any problems into the surrounding areas. This, I got to tell you, this isn't much of a um, rendering of, of the proposed activities. I mean, I, I don't even, you just can't see how it all relates, you know, size wise or, or anything. A little, I mean, it seems pretty straightforward, but it just seems, you know, just have a, what, it just doesn't seem like enough information. I, I, I agree, Tom, it probably will not be anything that uh, would re, uh, require a, a, a permit, but we can't tell from the information that that's the, that's the thing. It's all before, before we can make that determination. Yeah, it seems straightforward, but what, yeah. with this little bit of information, it's hard to just uh -huh. feel it. Yeah, if we could have something like this map, but with the outline of where the pool would actually be, to look at it. Well, I I submitted that. Uh, I submitted that with pictures uh, uh, to Suzanne uh, was last week or a week and a half ago. Um, I did a little, I did a diagram to the best of my ability, uh, you know, trying to draw it out. Uh, and I also took pictures uh, to show uh, the lawn space. Uh, it's pretty much, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. It is pretty cut and dry. I have, I have just about 50 feet from the back of my garage uh, to the uh, wooded area, but the wetlands doesn't, uh, because I, I know I got, you know, swamp behind me, but the wetlands doesn't start right at that, uh, right where the bushes are. Right. Uh, but I've got, I, I did submit uh, pictures uh, with the letter. Uh, I see the pictures. I just don't see any kind of a diagram other than this thing is up in the screen. Uh, uh, oh, you mean an actual diagram of the pool? Yeah, of, of, of the, uh, okay, uh, showing yeah, I, the boundaries of the pool. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I, I don't have those from the uh, the pool company yet. Um, uh, they have been um, the pool co the pool companies have been completely uh, back ordered uh, because of everything that's been going on over the past couple months. I'm actually uh, I may I may not even even if, if I if the permit gets approved, I may not even be able to uh, get the pool uh, this summer because they are so back ordered. And it's not just uh, this. It's not just this company. It's a lot of the pool companies. But I can, you know, obviously uh, get those plan. You know, get some sort of uh, plans and provide those to you if you need it. I think it's prudent. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we'll leave it like that. At the next meeting, you'll provide us some information, or we'll have it. Give it to staff anytime. Work with Suzanne, and she will help you guide you as yeah. we need. Okay. And, and I, okay. I, th I thought I had uploaded all the information, not, uh, not to the, um, to the, uh, what was the other, uh, to the Cheshire, uh, uh, to the website. I thought I had uploaded the website, but I must have missed that, but I'll, uh, I'll work with Suzanne and I'll get that for the next meeting. All right. Thanks a lot. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a permanent application for Richard Chevrolet Highland Avenue. 
and a site plan. Is there someone representing yes, Richard Mr. Chevrolet? Chairman. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. For the record, my name is Stephen Judas. I'm with the office of Harry Cole and Son. We're located at 876 South Main Street in Plantsville. I'm here tonight on behalf of uh, Richard Chevrolet. Um, would you like me to continue with the, my, my brief presentation for you? Yes, please. Okay. Um, our application tonight is, is for a uh, property known as Map 28, Parcel 12 on the uh, Cheshire uh, land records. Um, this is a I-2 zone property and it's 18 and a half acre piece. Um, it's currently undeveloped and it fronts on Highland Avenue. Um, it's just north of Realty Drive. The, uh, the property um, is, is rather large. There is a wetland off to the uh, easterly boundary um, away from our proposed development. And there's an also a wetland that runs along a northerly property line, which is outlined in this diagram in uh, light green. Um, the application from uh, for Richard Chevrolet is for used car store and a service and body shop to be located on this property. Um, as you can see uh, from the site plan before you, we have a, a access driveway, uh, parking areas, uh, building and uh, runoff swales, uh, detention basins, uh, treatment areas, and um, some upland uh, enhancement areas as well. Um, the building is going to be a 25,000 square foot building and there's going to be 174 uh, parking spaces. Um, as part of our uh, analysis of the site, you know, um, we talked to the DOT about this application. Um, we would have liked to have moved the driveway further south, but the Department of Transportation requested that we at least approach this commission uh, with this plan. Um, moving the access driveway opposite the driveway uh, to the west. Uh, just from a safety perspective and curb cuts on the Highland Avenue, they felt that this was the safest alternative. Uh, that being uh, required us to propose a, a, a decent amount of wetland impact uh, at the front of our property, approximately 4,900 square feet of wetland impact. Um, as part of that impact, we're also proposing to uh, redirect some of the state drainage system. There's a drainage pipe that comes off of Route 10 that uh, goes uncontrolled into the wetland. Uh, we're proposing to redirect that pipe and install a scour pit uh, to provide some sort of treatment before the water uh, gets to this wetland. And um, it's, it obviously wasn't our first choice, um, but we do understand uh, Highland Avenue is a busy road and uh, safety is an important aspect. So we, um, we did talk, we hired uh, Eric Davidson as our soil scientist and um, uh, he's been involved in, in the project. My main reason tonight uh, before you was to try to get a, a feel from the commission. Um, to, we were, our intent was to do a full presentation at your next meeting, but I thought maybe uh, the commission could consider whether or not they would deem this a significant activity uh, at this meeting. So we could, if, if you do want a public hearing, we can have that at the next meeting. Um, the, it's kind of a unique situation. This wetland is, um, has very sandy soils all around it. Um, our original plan was to provide mitigation areas. We did test pits out there. And all we can find is, is just sand and sand and sand as deep as we can dig. So the, uh, the, wet, the soil scientists felt that trying to mitigate this would probably fail uh, through a wetland mitigation. It would be better off doing upland enhancement uh, to mitigate this impact. He, he described this to me actually as, as more uh, have the characteristics of an uh, intermittent water course. But um, when, we were, when we were looking at this, we did find a previous delineation along this line and we felt it was safer to label it a wetland and to provide uh, some sort of mitigation or enhancement uh, to offset our impacts. Um, the site that we're proposing, if I can just briefly get into, uh, we have very uh, shallow swales. We have infiltration strips along all the pavement. Uh, we have uh, very shallow detention basins, grass basins that would be easily maintained. We tried to, if you look at the site, you'll see there's no uh, formal catch basins. It's all sheet runoff and swales and infiltration um, to try to develop a low impact site. Uh, that will uh, treat stormwater runoff before it gets to the wetlands. Um, and I, I think this site worked out uh, probably one of the best sites that, that we've uh, designed from that perspective. Uh, hopefully the, the commission will recognize some of the, 
the efforts that uh, Richard Chevrolet uh, was willing to put into this to this site. So um, th that's my brief presentation. I, I, my intent really was to give you a full presentation at the next meeting, but I, I was hoping uh, to keep uh, the ball moving and, and have I'll have Eric Davison at the next meeting as well. Was, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. I, and I don't. I just want to make sure I give you enough information that, that you can make this uh, determination uh, and you feel informed about the application. Mr. Chairman, I propose Folks. to declare this proposed application significant within the context of the regulations, quoting our regulations specifically 10.2a, environmental impact of proposed regulated activity, 10.2b, applicant's purpose for and any feasible and prudent alternatives to the proposed regulatory activity, and 10.2D, irreversible and irretrievable loss of wetland or watercourse resources, which would be caused by the proposed regulated activity. Uh, and that's the form of a motion. Is there a that second the to that? Of a motion to declare this activity significant within context of the regulations. Is there a second? Second, Terry. So moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, oh, yes, please, I do. Um, Charles jumped in there on me before I could comment, not comment. Um, I have concerns because I manage the company that's abutting to this property. And I do not want to get into any, not that I have any problem with this, but I do want any conflict here. And I don't know um, how the commission feels we should handle this. If I should recuse myself, that is fine. Uh, but does that affect the quorum and in this decision right now? We have five. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Okay. And I'm going to. Uh, I think you're going to do that. You want to recuse yourself. yourself? That's your decision, but I wouldn't. Uh, it doesn't bother me either way, personally. Anybody else in the commission have any uh, input on that? Well, mm. I think you know what your own interests are and whether or not they would be affected. So you would have to determine in the next hearing whether. You felt you should recuse. Yeah, that. it's actually up to yeah. you. Your own decision. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm going to just take the high road here and just recuse myself from this from this uh, vote, if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. Respect your wishes. Did we vote? Yes, we did. No, we didn't. We did not no, vote we yet. Vote. Not yet. All in favor the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, so we're going to have a public hearing at our meeting on July 7th. Is it time to make the notice, Suzanne? Yes, we do. And just for the record, there were four yes, no against, and one abstained. Uh, under the uh, advice to the applicant, uh, under alternative, uh, feasible and prudent alternatives, previous proposals for use of this site and uh, proposed coming in from the eastern side along the existing driveway that crosses that property. So uh, I, I would like to know why that's not feasible as part of the presentation next meeting. Yes, sir. We will do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything else? Okay. Thank you very much for your On time. To the next. Consideration, so. Request for determination, Ed Barnett, House to Home Construction, 569 Cornwall Avenue. I understand that uh, the engineer would like to speak too, or is Attorney Fazone, you're representing the? I am representing the applicant. I've asked uh, the only the only difference on uh, this request for determination and the one that failed uh, a vote on it failed at the last meeting um, is that a, a document labeled a sketch has been submitted and it shows clearly uh, that the uh, landing and the stairs are within the envelope that was approved by the commission in the original permit for this file. Um, I was not certain uh, 
whether or not uh, some of the votes are against the determination and to require an application um, were because of the uncertainty as to whether or not it was included within the, uh, uh, the building envelope that was approved. I asked Scott uh, Perienda, the engineer, to basically attend the meeting uh, in case there were questions about how he uh, created that sketch, that sketch, and what you know, and actually asked to the accuracy of it. Although, if you look at it, um, it's pretty clear that the uh, the landing and the stairs are not within the building envelope, and that's really the only difference from what we presented two weeks ago. I would. Uh, I don't know that there's any need to rehash all of that um, unless the commission would like me to. Uh, I think the minutes and the exhibits that we presented um, at the last meeting could be made part, could be made part of the record uh, for this determination. Does and we it have still look the same as it did when the picture was presented at the last meeting? Yes, it does. And I think I, pre I presented one, one picture just to keep the amount of documents down for presentation, but it's exactly the same as at the last meeting. Okay. The, uh, the issue uh, that Go ahead. as a commission we have is when we approve this application, if there was any change at all the applicant had to come before the commission and notify the staff so that we could discuss anything that was going to be done that was different from what was originally approved. And that's the uh, problem with the, uh, the application as far as I see it. This was uh, very specific. It's a very tight uh, noose or chain on the application. This is a, a difficult piece. And the builder had uh, a couple of incidents in the past where things were not followed exactly. Uh, we checked with the town attorney and we can consider past performance of an applicant in deciding on an application. And that's why this one was uh, very particular. And he violated one of the, at least one of the provisions of the application. Whereas if there was any change, he was supposed to come to the commission. And that's why Suzanne did not sign the, uh, the, the uh, sign off on the, what do we call it? Certificate of Certificate of Thank you. I, Earl, if I may, the, um, what I somewhere in last or two weeks ago's meeting, I know or it was. I guess I noted that the um, approval was a was a rectangular box, and I think it. I think somewhere on that approval, it said that the shape of the house. Would would I don't know if it said probably I can't remember the verbiage, but I think it said that it that, that it that it would be different, you know, then then was approved, but but it would fit in that rectangle, and it does. And and again, my position a couple of weeks ago, or my observation, I I don't I hesitate to call it a position. My observation was that it appeared that the landing and stairs were indeed within that rectangle we approved and, and had, had, had they built the exact footprint of the house or of that rectangle that was approved, then, then we wouldn't, and didn't put a deck on it, we wouldn't be having this discussion. So it seems to me that since it's within that rectangle whether it's a deck, a landing, or or a concrete wall, 
it seemed like we had already given our um, permission to construct inside that envelope, inside that footprint. So I continue to feel that way, especially now that it's that they've demonstrated within the uh, within that uh, uh, that footprint. It 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 to me it doesn't make a difference whether it's a landing or or whatever it is. I, I liken it to if there was a if there was a courtyard in the middle of this house, we wouldn't have any gripes with it. It's within the footprint. So I, I don't know. I just I just really struggle that we're that that if this was a concrete wall, the back of his family room, that it wouldn't be an issue. It would just be an as built that would show that the house was within the um, the approved footprint. So that could Tom, be I in my thinking. Tom, I, I agree with you, but um, we in later meetings after the approval put many restrictions on Mr. Barnett with regards to his violations and his uh, basically laid out the steps in which he were to uh, come in front of us. Um, and I, I guess we have to look back at those at the cease and desist orders um, and the reinstatement of the permit and all the stipulations we put on at that time to see that if the wording in there has anything to do with any changes at all uh, to the plan um, to stay consistent here. Um, I don't have that information in front of me. Suzanne, perhaps you can uh, see if we had any any verbiage in there with regards to any change of the footprint or, or design plans or building permit. Um, well, the that... standard language in the stipulation for uh, all the permits is stipulation number two, which identifies no changes or modifications may be made to the plans as presented without subsequent review and approval of the Cheshire Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission. All right, so, but that plans is the, is the box as, as Tom is looking at it. Is that correct? Well, it's, it's the overall approval, but yes. we've never approached things from, you know, the planning department. We haven't approached things of, does it fit inside this box? We look at things to say, is this different? And for example, in May of 2019, after the permit was issued, we received a zoning permit request that showed a deck on the back. And then it was brought to their attention that that was different and they needed to clear that up. And that was mentioned by the commission to them at a meeting where then uh, the applicant or the permit holder at that point had indicated that they would come back for a permit for that. Okay. So looking at the May 7th, which I'm doing right now, the May 7th, 2019, um, it, the, uh, Mr. And I'm going to say it wrong. Sin, how do you say it? Sin Con right. He said they were okay with applying for a permit for the deck separately. The reason is just what Suzanne said that had to do with the zoning permit. She could not sign off on it. The deck was part of this. So the applicant's representative said they were okay with applying for a permit for the deck separately. And thus what was approved was without the deck. So this whole thing with it fitting into a certain scheme um, is, it is contradictory to what the record of May 7th, 2019 says. And um, that was repeated by both Chairman Dijon who said they can apply for an application for the deck and that nothing can and happen until the report comes in. And the same thing Dr. Dimmitt said, and that the deck needs to be removed from the map plan and the deck should be made part of its application. And then as a result of that, Suzanne was able, and Suzanne, correct me if I'm wrong, to sign the zoning um, permit. Is that correct? Correct. And it, and it had it been part of the plan still, would you have been able to sign the, the zoning permit? No, because it wouldn't be in keeping with the permit. Okay. Thank you very much for that clarification, Carrie. You're welcome. Look, I, I don't have anything further. Um, the, uh, you know, I think it's obvious that it's not a deck but um, 
whatever the commission wants to do, we have filed a, uh, uh, an application for a permit. Um, and um, we would be prepared to go forward with that. I personally think that's a wonderful idea. And uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, not suggesting that. I, well, I'm not trying to read anybody's <laughs> mind. I think if a permit were filed, the uh, deck would not look like it looks now. It would reflect something more appropriate to what the uh, homeowner would like. Well, that's a, that's an entirely different thing. Can Mr. I, Kirk? Right. We're we're um, the the application that we filed is strictly for the uh, landing and the stairs. It's not for a deck. Um, I think. Okay. That's you what you referred, want. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. you referred to it the last time as a, it would be an after the fact uh, application because right. the stairs are there. Right. You mind if I say something? Please. Hi, <laughs> it's, it's Ed Barnett for the record. How, how is everybody doing? Um, I understand exactly uh, where you guys are coming from. Um, I'm just trying to move forward with something. This house is sold. We're trying to set up a closing date sooner than later. We never had an intention of, of putting a deck on it. I don't know how the deck was originally incorporated in there. That's neither here nor there. Um, we always intended, because there's a slider there, a six foot slider, to just get down on the ground. And that was the least amount of <clears throat> size uh, a deck that we could, we could obviously fit inside the approved box. Um, but I, I, I'm just would ask again, I, I realize uh, we've had our differences in the past, but um, the finished product is, is here. It's, it's been quite a long time in coming. And um, I just would, re, you know, would, would uh, respectfully request that, that uh, you take another look at it and, and see if it's something you can, you know, move past because I, you know, I'm, I am in the improved box. I'm not going to be coming out of the approved box and, I'm not going to be asking for anything more than it's built there now. So that's, that's the only thing I can ask you to do. Otherwise I have to wait for two weeks and it also throws into um, a scenario where the people who are approved might lose their mortgage approval, et cetera, et cetera. So that's my common sense uh, question for determination to see if you can move forward with this. So Suzanne, what is it that we're, we're determining that, uh, a permit application? I'm not sure. Yes, the request for determination is asking whether an application for a permit is required. And we have one, right? Yes, one was submitted. Okay. Susan, can I just ask one other question? So, but if you determined that you, you that is in within the box, I've submitted the I, I've submitted the uh, uh, application for a permit. Could the, could the commission vote on a determination that allows that to, to be satisfactory? The commission is able to vote on the request for determination at tonight's meeting. They are not able to take any action or vote on any new applications that are received tonight. Right. So taking into consideration the vote on the last meeting, they, they could in fact vote again if they saw it fit to, to pass it, correct? There's the request for determination they acted on at the last meeting that's separate than what's being proposed tonight. So you have a request for determination tonight, which the commission is discussing right now. They can make a decision tonight. If they move on, if they decide that a application for a permit is needed, then we go on to the next item of business on the agenda, which is the application. They can discuss it, but no action can be taken tonight because they need to wait a minimum of 14 days before taking action on new applications that are received. Suzanne, um, can I, I also have a question. Excuse me, Ed, can I talk? Sure, please. Hi. So when we, when we, uh, when the applicant came for the permit to build this house, did, did we have, did we approve this plan, the shape of it that it is now, or did we approve 
the box. The commission approved the plan. The plan, the yeah, shape, so when I the shape of the house that was built. The plan. They approved the plan. It's up to the commission if the commission wants to incorporate whether it fits inside that box. That's up for the commission to decide. There's nothing I in the regulations that I understand that what I'm asking that. is when, when, the, when the applicant came before us, he had the house plan that we approved or did we, or did we approve the rectangle? Can we see uh, what we approved? Approved the site plan which mm -hmm. incorporates the entire site. So that includes the establishment of the non-encroachment area. It includes the placement of the markers. It includes grading. It includes all of that. So it's an overall site plan. But the, the house that was drawn on that site plan, is it a square box or does it have all the jigs and jogs that we have in this the house now? It has all the jigs I, and No, it's jogs. shown as a square. The, it yeah, was the shown as a square. Shows a square. All right, so we did we did approve the box then, in my opinion. So uh, yeah, it's I, a little bit of a, it's a little bit different story then. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Fazones, um, if I may, I think that the uh, box was approved. There was a set of plans uh, presented, um, and I think if you just look at what happened with the deck, the deck didn't fit within that square or rectangle. Um, and it was basically up to the applicant to build the house that you saw the house plans within the rectangle that was approved. Because well, what I'd like to specify to the commission is that this from staff perspective, being asked to sign off on the CO, it, it's not about the shape of the house on the plan versus what's in existence. It's that these stairs are located within the upland review area and just as we see on the agenda there's other items that come before the commission that when something is in the upland review area there's no administrative authority for me to just sign off on things so that's why this is coming before the commission it, it doesn't have to do with the shape of anything that's not precluding me from signing it's because something is different within the upland review area that's not shown on the plans if this, if there was no dotted lines on this, if there was no shape of the house in that rectangle, then there, then there's nothing different. I mean, that's I I I really am struggling with this. Just I I, I somewhat uh, differ with you, Suzanne. I think by approving that rectangle, the commission approved the disturbance of that small amount of. Uh, of upland okay. review area that is now being affected by the stairs. Minimum. And the as-built that I received just showed a set of stairs within the upland review area. At that time, I didn't have any advantage of any overlay of the approved area. I just look at it. I see that there is a difference within the upland review area of what's shown on the plans. Fair enough. I, I understand that uh, completely. Um, and that's why I asked to have the overlay done. And um, that's why we now have a second request for determination. But, you know, obviously the commission's got to decide what they want to do. Right. And um, I just want to point out, Ms. Dunn, we frequently file uh, a request for determination and then file an application along with it, just in case the commission doesn't approve the request for determination so we don't lose another two weeks. Right. Um, but it's not like an admission no. that we don't want the determination. We're familiar with that. Just like uh, we, uh, we don't approve a box, we approve the site plan for the house. We know the house has a shape but it's a lot easier to approve the area the house is going to be in than it is to say, do your as built now, and that's what we're going to approve. There was a change made, and it needed, a, it needed an application. Well, 
respectfully, if, if I may, uh, Suzanne, the, at the last meeting, and again, I understand if I had this overlay for you when we had first given you the information for a CO, um, you, you, you probably um, would have guided the commission in a different way because the, the depth well, I didn't, that- Just to be clear, I'm not guiding the commission. I, I turned to the commission for guidance. At the, at the last meeting, you said what was approved and what was approved was the box. And, and, and nothing's no. changed. Everything's within the box. I don't. If, if I would like to the, just. I, I'm not. I don't recall making mention of a box. And also, this isn't about me making mention of a box or not making mention of a box. This is up you, for you, discussion amongst you, the commission. It's the commission that makes the decision. So I don't I'm, have I'm, any I'm, opinion I'm, on this. I'm looking for direction. That's all. Mr. Kurtz, um, and if I'm looking at the correct plan that was approved, and I, I think- um, Is there any way we can put that up? I think Suzanne gave me that this, um, and uh, I don't, but to uh, Mr. Kurtz, to your, point um, the the approved map no nah, that's not the one I don't know maybe if I stick this in front of my face you can see what I'm this talking Anthony, about the last page that shows the two no th this was something it, it's not something I made a part of the application but it was something I believe I asked you if I could get a copy of the approved plan. Yes, and, and we gave you that copy, but yep. we don't and have all, that digitized. I would have had to okay. have had that prepared ahead of the meeting. And all we, we show it here. My yeah, all my point is that uh, Mr. Kurtz on the approved plan, it does not show the house laid out. And that's why we're talking about that the area within that with the envelope uh, was what was approved for construction. Um, they don't, it doesn't show a footprint of the house uh, within that in the, in the approved document. Uh, let me ask, because it seems to me that we had the original approved plan and then as a result of a cease and desist and a few other things like that, at one point we asked for it as built and we got a plan uh, that showed uh, a closer outline of what the actual house was, but did not show that back deck piece. And that showed up later. So that may be part of the problem. There may be more than one plan that went in front of us. You no, know, Mr. Dimmick, I, th I think to your point, I think, um, maybe in the original blueprints that were submitted to the building department, it might have shown a deck on it um, with, with, the, with no intention of building it. That was probably, you know, again, we didn't go back and redraw the prints taking the deck off for them, <coughs> but we never had the intention of, of building a deck, only a landing to get out of the six foot slider. Well, we have a difference of opinion, that's for sure. Um, was, I, I I'm wanna, sorry. I don't want to go into detail about it, but uh, you, uh, if that's part of the house is approved, I don't know who approved that uh, deck. Doesn't seem to conform to any uh, regulations. Well, the, the, uh, in the last meeting, and maybe you could pull, you know, I know there's no minutes, but there's obviously there's record of it. That's what made me think of it when I watched it and I saw Suzanne pulled up and put the 40 by 60 box. And she says, that is what is approved for wetlands. That is what's approved. Anything inside that box can be built. I mean, and that's really, what we're looking at and, and talking about and nothing that I've done is outside of that. 
area. So I don't I, remember Suzanne making that statement at the last meeting. I suppose I'm reading. Up, neither do I. No, she she put up. She I admit put I don't up, remember it either. Well, I, mean, I, I, no, I, I remembered it pretty pretty vividly because that's what made me think of the fact that I, I I'm obviously inside the box that was approved, and I think if you go back, you're gonna you're going to see that that's what she put up as an approval. So Right. On page 13 oh. of the minutes, it identifies Ms. Simone put up a map showing the original site plan and as built. Um, then Chairman Kurtz made a comment. Then Ms. Simone explained Mr. Barnett was in the meeting waiting room and it showed he joined the meeting. Then Ms. Simone reviewed the site plan approval showing the house and the uplands. And there's no comment of me making any determination that way. Uh, Ms. Simone State said that they are looking at the screen is the approved plan. Right, which showed a box. Instead of uh, he said, she said, I said, you said. Well, we're, uh, we're, we need to go Ms. back Dave to the and words. I are reading the, the minutes. That's clear. not fair. <laughs> no, I, I understand that, but th there was never an overlay that 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 would show you that uh, again. I, we are we are where we are, ladies and gentlemen. I understand right. that. I understand that, and and, and I I do appreciate. You need to go back to the documents. Okay. I, I I get this, but at, at the end of the day, what it does is also sets a bad precedent for someone who who has an approval to do something within a box. I'm within the box, and now you're telling me that I I need approval for something, which I will I will, you know. That's why I wanted to, to, to show you that I want to put this to bed by saying, okay, I'm, I will apply for the permit for the landing. The landing is not going to change because I don't want to get any closer to wetlands, but I need to get out of a slider. And if I didn't need to get out of a slider, I wouldn't put anything there. But, you know, I had to. So there, there's no other way to do it. Um, in, in the interest of moving things along here, Ed, so you're stating that if we feel that this it's, this request for determination and a permit is required, and I, I do believe that a permit will be granted based on uh, what is ha what the information is provided, but you have been represented in numerous times before and also by your other representatives of your father-in-law uh, that a permit would be uh, gotten if a deck was was built. So we have- Not a deck though, Willie, it's a, it's a landing, Willie. It's not a deck. It, 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 it's, it's something, it's outside of what was on the original plan. So we, we have to be consistent based on what was previously approved. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning with Earl in saying that a permit is required. Perhaps we can all work together here to get the verbiage done so Suzanne can prepare the approval so that for the next meeting we can vote on that. Um, I, I don't want to speak for any other member, uh, commission members, um, but I would be happy with that. But I do believe a permit is, is required. That's my two cents. Is that a motion, Will? Yes. Or was that a comment? That was I a motion. Okay. A motion. That's a motion. That's that's a motion. Thank you. Okay, it's been made and seconded. Um, let me just state it so I understand it. The motion is to say a permit should be required. So if somebody votes yes, they think the permit should be required. If somebody votes no, they don't think a permit is necessary. It can we determine that it's not necessary? Is that is that correct? That is correct. So we're we're will you're saying that a permit is required because of its impact on the wetlands or the upland review area? I think I'm saying a, because I'm saying a permit is required. Be, go ahead. On the record back several months ago. <laughs> right. What what Carrie read before was was telling to me on the May fifth by Mr. Siniscalco about the deck and a separate permit would come for us in front of us. It did not. We have a you know checks the box along this whole thing to do. Um, I don't see a problem with this, but I do think we need to have a permit just to check the, the final box to move forward. Um, so I'm trying to help Mr. Barnett the best I can in, in moving it along so that perhaps we can get all the comments in tonight and, and get Suzanne to prepare verbiage for the next meeting to approve it um, so that perhaps um, the, uh, you know, he can close on the property and what have you and we can move forward on this property. Um, but I do believe a permit is required. Sorry for jump uh, rambling on. 
Do you want to discuss it further or do you want to vote? Uh, we can vote. Oh. I would just like to suggest uh, and get the edification from my own peace of mind that if we say a permit is required, it's one thing for us to approve it, but he needs the necessary permits from the building department too, in order to do this properly. Is that true? Because we can't uh, for the CO give a permit to yes. build it. We can't give a permit to build it. No. We okay. can say after the fact. it's all right to build it, but he needs the permit from the uh, building inspector. Right. This is just the authority okay. under the Wetlands Commission right. acknowledging that the structure is in place and, and granting permission just from the Inland Wetland Commission's perspective. Okay. Correct. Good. I'm sure you've noticed by now, but I'm not very good at those things. So I, I need it spelled out for me. Um, should we move the question? Time to go to a vote? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Suzanne, would you... Uh, Call the people to, to vote to... and uh, don't call me first. Yes, Please. okay. I'll go alphabetically. So, uh, Dr. Dimmick? Aye. Yes. Mm -hmm. Carrie Dunn? Yes. Will McPhee? Yes. Tom Norback? Nay. Earl Kurtz? Yes. Okay, so the motion has passed for yes, one no, that a application for a permit is needed. And then that brings us to item number five on the agenda, which is permit application for the same matter that was discussed tonight. Do, do we have enough? I mean, I, I think we have enough information in front of us and know what's going on here. Uh, now that we know we've determined that a permit is required, do we have enough for to move forward so that Suzanne can prepare the, the uh, permit for the next meeting? Suzanne, how do you feel about that? Uh, yes, I have to look at the file. Uh, I can be in communication with Attorney Fazone just to make sure that everything is in place. I don't have the file right in front of me, but as far as the determination from the Wetlands Commission for preparing language, yes, I can get that done. If there's any other housekeeping, uh, issues, I'll be in communication with Attorney Fazone if if there's anything else that's needed. There, okay. There's an as-built as part of the uh, application. The as-built shows the upland review line uh, area. It shows the location of the uh, landing and the stairs. Uh, the photographs show that um, and uh, that there's probably one of the sauna tubes uh, holding the pier uh, in the upland review area. Uh, that would um, that would come, that would be a disturbance. Uh, yeah, look, if you compare that photograph with the prior sketch. It looks like the back sauna tube is a disturbance in the upland is, I, I think the back one is not. The front one is a disturbance in the upland review area. And the there will be a pad necessary to be put under where the stairs are. Um, I think that's probably about four square feet, maybe five square feet. So you probably have seven square feet of uh, disturbance in the upland review area. At the very extremity, I might point of the upland review area. Uh, I mean, I don't know what more we could possibly present I, I have no problem with that. I think we can, that should be enough for us to move forward. I don't know, Suzanne and anybody other members. What I was okay. referring to is just looking at the checklist for the other items to make a complete application. But again, um, I'll speak with attorney Fazone. I'll look through the file after the meeting tonight. And if there's any issues, um, I will contact attorney Fazone. Okay. I'm just trying to help put this thing to bed. That's all. 
Good idea. Okay, we received the, we accept the permit, which we do anyway. Yes. And so it's on to the received. next item. Yes. Next item is a cease and desist, desist release order. request. Okay, have the conditions of the cease and desist been met? Attorney Fazone, would you like to speak to that? Uh, I, 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 I believe they have. Um, I, um, I, to be honest, I haven't really reviewed the cease and desist order. Um, I'm kind of going on the, um, and I, I, I definitely don't want to put words in Suzanne's mouth, but I thought it was stated that it was only the stairs mm -hmm. uh, and the landing that was keeping her from signing off on the uh, CO request. Uh, I believe the grass has been established. Um, I, I don't think there's anything else uh, to be done uh, pursuant to this to the season to see. Yes, yeah. the season desist, desist was issued and it had made mention of uh, the site that at that time was unstabilized and that uh, work was undertaken outside of the sequence of the construction sequence. And so the cease and desist was left standing on the record. At my last visit on the site, I do confirm that grass has germinated and is establishing that the, the split rail fence that was installed at the beginning of this project is still in place and that the non-encroachment markers are still in the uh, required location. So there's no additional work that needs to be done on the site in order to comply with the permit. Uh, so there is no other site work that needs to be done. I have uh, okay. proposed wording from staff on release of the cease and desist order. I don't know how many other people have gotten it. Yes. I have no problem with the wording. No, it seems good. You move staff wording? I move staff wording for the release of the cease and desist order for uh, 569 Cornwall Avenue. I second that. I move by Dr. Dimick and seconded by Ms. Dunn. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously by all those commission members present. Well, if this were Major League Baseball, batting 333 wouldn't be bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. Is there any other business to come before the meeting? Yes. Yes, there is item number seven, a request for determination for 540 Peck Lane yes. above ground pool. And I can Sorry put that, that. I it. up on the screen. Earl tried to get out early. Yeah. We have someone speaking for the applicant. We have the applicant speaking. I believe the home Please. and a representative from the pool company are both here. Oh, okay. What have we got? You want me to go first, Kate? Oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> uh, so the uh, proposed is an above ground swimming pool application. And um, we did submit a map um, to Suzanne showing all the setbacks so laid out. Uh, you can tell we sent, submitted some pictures. It's a yard, um, lots of yard. We're putting the pool up. It's above ground. Disturbance. It's trading more than anything. Um, and you can see, if you look up, the house next door is like fully in the up and So it's like um, pretty straightforward. Oops. 
So, Mr. Chairman, the photograph that's on the screen shows the Upland Review area in the blue hatch lines. The solid mm -hmm. color is a wetland soil. The pool is proposed to be within the Upland Review area in the existing lawn. Uh, they identify that it's a 24-foot round pool. Um, the clearing limit of this property, I, I believe, goes a little bit further into this wetland area. This property was developed prior to the inland wetland regulations taking effect. Now, I was going to ask that. I thought this was late 50s or early 60s when those were in, but I'm not sure. So a deck is being built closer to the house, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. There it is, okay. And then we can take a look well, at the pictures. This is the above ground pool, right? Correct. Yeah. It's the same situation we had earlier. Yes, but we have drawings this time. They've, they've located yeah. it before us. And we have a yep. drawing. In yep. The, I'm uh, pretty close to uh, where it's going to be. I don't have any problem with anybody else. Nope. No. Nope. No. No problem. No. I move that the. This is a request for termination, right? Yeah. That no, no permit is needed for this uh, for 540 Peck Lane for the above ground installation of above ground pool. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. So Mr. McPhee moved. Mr. Norback seconded. Can I hear that voice right? Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried by all those commission members present unanimously. Thank you very much. I didn't see this page before, but it looks empty now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that means that there's no permit that is required. So we will be able to sign off on the zoning permit tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you so much for your help. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any more new business? What else? Did no, I miss? that is it. Okay, we can uh, close this meeting at 943. That's pretty good. Excellent. <laughs> wow. All right, Suzanne, guys, you still. Clap.